And out of this marriage of symbol and dream, out of this magical union, this is the city forever born. Made of iron and steel, cast out of the roaring furnaces east of the Allegheny, carted over rail, rib canal. Iron ore out of the great Sabi range, dug out of the earth, blasted, melted, refined, and poured into the skeletal shapes to erect a city deep in the earth, high in the sky. Made of lime, zinc, tin and oil, of rubber, asphalt, tile and glass, of wood, plaster, paint, cement, of brass, copper, nickel, aluminum, of brick and of stone and of marble. Made of a hundred things from hundreds of cities to form the wonder, to build the magic. And the people too from a hundred places come together from lands and nations beyond the seas, come from out of a past that finds its future here in this present, this city, come to live in the middle of the dream they help build in the middle of the day. And each day life moves forward, roars by with the sound of urgency, a dream that wakes and slumbers and wakes again to the thundering song of a city rushing into its future, filled today with the life of tomorrow. Filled with the labor and product of thousands of companies, hundreds of industries, more than three and a half million workers providing daily the daily needs for living for the biggest city on earth, for the millions of people of their own city, the world's greatest consumer market. For the greater millions beyond the city's roads and highways, beyond the great river bridges that bind the city to itself and link it to the villages, towns and cities of the nation. A dream whose reality is strong enough to produce, package and deliver the goods of one city to the thousand and one markets of a nation and a world. What does it deliver? What does it make? Let's look it over. Electronics, shoes, furs, furniture, women's coats and suits. Put that in your pipe and smoke it because it makes that too. And intimate apparel, banknotes, blouses, store fixtures, sportswear, refined sugar. And have a cup of coffee because it roasts that too. Tailored clothing, toys and dolls, men's furnishings, scientific instruments, art materials, work clothing, dresses and formal wear. Let it rain, let it pour because it makes umbrellas too. You name it, it's got it. And an appetite to match. When millions of people sit down to eat along with company that's dropped in for a visit, it's a long table that's set with food from every state in the Union and 50 countries of the world. With every bite, there's a swallow, a five million quart gulp of milk from cow to consumer every day in the week. And bread in every shape, form, and texture, hot from the ovens. Bread to build you up, French bread, Italian, Jewish, and Scandinavian, black bread and white bread, whole wheat, corn, and rye. And New Yorkers eat it, enjoy it, and always ask for more. Bread with four millions of meat every day, with one million pounds of chicken, duck, and turkey. Bread with half a million pounds of fish and six and a half million eggs. Bread with butter, jam, and cheese. Bread, the staff of life. More than feeding itself and supplying itself, New York handles billions of dollars worth of foreign trade. A fabulous port that nature provided with an amazing system of sheltered harbors and waterways that can berth 400 ocean ships at one time, that accommodates more than 26,000 ship movements a year, one ship every 20 minutes. New York's waterfront, a tireless giant that moves mountains of cargo every day clear around the clock, clear around the world. New York 
York is a city whose life keeps up with the needs of the times, whose people move with the spirit of the times and fill the years of our time with their strength and their purpose. Build out of their daily needs, out of the little things of daily life, build the big dream that never stops. Build its shape and its directions. What is a dream? A light to see the way ahead, and more, a plan to live by generation to generation. A plan to build a life and a nation with strength and with purpose and with life itself. The life of one man multiplied by many men. Men who came to a wilderness demanding not just a living, but life itself. The equality to share it, the freedom to enjoy it. Men who lived together, who worked together, shared a dream together, and for their land, their children, their dream, fought together and died together. The sound of liberty filling the land they had created and their children. The names have settled into dust, and grass grows, and flowers foretell a future even brighter than the names of those who dreamed it. sacred to the memory of the dream. For out of their dream, a city was built, a nation was conceived and born and dedicated. And on April 30th, 1789, the dream took form. Here in this city, the young nation's first capital, George Washington took the oath of office as the first president of the United States, then walked to this church. It was a lovely day. And here in St. Paul's Chapel, Trinity Parish, here in this pew, he sat and with all Americans prayed for the future of that dream, to the proposition that all men are created equal, created for life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness, prayed for the new nation's life and its dreams singing and free. The dream that was a nation's grew and prospered too within the city that had nurtured it. Men and tools hammered out the great shapes. Men and tools and purpose. And so the face of the city changed generation to generation. Changed by men building the city each for his time, rebuilding it each for his need. Men who dug the deep pits out of the ancient rock, planted the concrete beds, the roots of steel, and saw it grow high against the sky to blossom out in shining form. And from the nations of the earth and the cities, men came to live and build this city, made strong by their hands, made magic by the dream they fed with their dreams. If it's good enough to dream about, it's good enough to write about. New York's second largest industry, printing and publishing, produces 75% of the country's books, over 60% of the giant circulation magazines, a foreign language press of almost 250 publications, and over 150 general news publications carry the New York Line, a dateline that began...